In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I made this TV console. It has plenty of shelf room to store TV equipment, but also has two side components that can store miscellaneous items or even be utilized as dressers. So let me show you how I did it. This entire project is made up from three sheets of plywood. And if you build it, you can play around with color schemes, but I wanted my two end compartments to be painted white and the center shelves and internal shelving to be walnut. I first started by breaking down my sheets of plywood on my workbench using my track saw. And I do have a set of plans for this project, so if you're interested in a material list and a cut list to work off of, look in the description for a link. After getting the pieces down to a manageable size, I took them over to my table saw and cut them down even further, utilizing the sliding table portion of my new saw for the first time. Now, since I want most of this build to be painted, I went ahead and laid out all of the parts that will end up white and prep them to get a coat of paint. This meant running my Palm RRS over all of the edges and getting them nice and smooth, then dusting them off and rolling on some white. I don't know why, but it just felt kind of funny doing all of the finishing as my second step. When it came to assembling, I pulled out two of my right angle clamp jigs and grabbed the side to attach to the top. Since this project will be indoors, I stuck with using Type Bond Original wood glue, then pre-drilled and attached with screws. Next was to attach the shelves. Since the front edge of these will be exposed, I purchased some iron-on walnut veneer edge banding to wrap the front and back edges. I started by placing the shelf in my super jaws tearing off a strip of banding a little bit longer than the side and then ironing it on. Rockler actually makes a very handy edge banding trimming tool and I actually have one, I just couldn't locate it. So I used a chisel to clean up the edges instead. If you use a chisel, you just need to make sure to keep it nice and flat so it doesn't dig into the veneer of the face and gouge it. I repeated the process on all of the shelves for the compartments, as well as the longer shelves that will be spanning between the two ends. And just a tip, I used my Armor Tool mobile workbench as not only a side workstation, but also placed a stop to keep my veneer from unwinding as I was pulling off these strips. When that task was done and it was time to drill a few pocket holes to attach the shelves, I cleared off the space and clamped my auto adjusting Armor Tool jig in place using two scrap two by fours as side supports, then drilled a few pocket holes into each side of the shelf. Whew. You know, I didn't know how I would like the walnut shelves, but I think that this looks pretty snazzy. Now to actually attach them, I flipped the unit I made earlier so that the open end was facing up. You can see I cut four scraps to size to act as standoffs and make attaching the shelves a lot quicker and easier. This will be the bottom once we're done, so I made sure to not only place the edge banded side of the shelf facing front, but also that the pocket holes were facing the bottom. After the shelves were in, I attached what will be the bottom piece. By doing it this way, you won't have to work in a tight little nook to attach the shelves. Next I repeated with the second compartment. This one I wanted to add one more shelf to the center so that there would be three total. I used the same spacers, but cut them down to the needed size. I also left mine as shelves, but you could also very easily turn a few into drawers. To cover up the screws on the top side, I made sure to countersink the heads past the surface, and then I just dabbed on a little bit of joint compound on top. I use this to fill in any small voids on the edges of the plywood as well. Okay, so let's get it up to a workable height and throw a back on it. This was just screwed directly onto the back, so nice and simple. The doors are also very simple, but they need the hinges attached first. I'm using some concealed hinges and you can order a template to counterbore a large hole to sink the hinge cup into. I measured to make sure that these hinges would be spaced equally from each other and also made sure they wouldn't be placed in the way of a shelf, then used a Forstner bit to make the counterbore. You know you've gone deep enough when the hinge can sit in it flush. Then I used the screws that came with the hinges to attach it. To make sure I was attaching portion B right in line with portion A on the door, I first cut a piece of scrap to the same height as my door and marked off exactly where the center of the hinges fell on it. 
This way I could hold my measuring scrap up to my cabinet and transfer these marks to the inside. And this will give me an exact center line to now use my provided jig to pre-drill the two holes needed to attach portion B. So if I did everything right, then this should attach and close easily. I call that a success. Now these hinges do come with readjustable features on them. So next I played with turning each one to get different gaps and spaces to close up nicely. Okay. What's next? After repeating the same steps to hang the second door and get it fully adjusted, I removed both doors from their body to add a handle. Now, if you remember the final look, this handle isn't a standard door pull. It's a big rectangle made from the walnut ply that is also an accent piece to break up the big white space of these boxes. I first marked off where these handles would need to be placed, then used my palm RRS to remove the majority of the paint in that area. To attach them, I used a quick setting wood glue by Type Bond called Thick and Quick. And this cuts the wait time down to about 15 minutes. However, it is worth noting that thick and quick is unaffected by finishes. So maybe removing the paint was unnecessary. To avoid using nails that would be seen, I weighted both handles down with just a few heavy-ish items in my shop. All right, and next was to move things inside the house and get things set up. Currently, this room has carpet in it, but I will be ripping it up and laying down a hardwood floor. I'm leading with that because the carpet does prevent the doors from easily opening and closing, but I'm not worried about it right now. There are three shelves that span in between the two units to connect them. To hang these shelves, I rotated the units on their side and attached three ledges for the shelves to sit on. Once again, I'm using thick and quick, but also, since this is an area people won't see, I used a few brad nails to clamp them in place while it dried. And you can see that I'm using a square to make sure that these are going on straight. Once all six were placed, I could move the outside units roughly to their position, then slide the three shelves on. The top and bottom are made from the walnut ply, but the center one I made from a sheet of glass I picked up from a local glass supplier. You can either set the shelves in place and let gravity hold them there, or secure them from the underside using screws. And that's actually the entire project done. I can't believe how simple it was, but I love the way that it turned out looking. Before calling it quits, I'm gonna go ahead and hang a TV, which actually brings me to this video sponsor, which is LG. I decided to create this TV stand for this room because LG was kind enough to send me the awesome new 2019 LG OLED TV. It is incredibly thin and has a gorgeous floating glass design. It's got an AI picture that enhances pictures on screen and improves the detail. And it optimizes brightness to the best level regardless of the surrounding. The AI sound is awesome because it identifies audio sources and provides optimal sound for each one. The TV even has special recognition technology that allows it to redesign sound to fit your space. Which is perfect for someone like me because I enjoy good sound, but I'm not too savvy on playing with the different levels. The AI smart features on this LG TV include built-in Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, and all of the best smart home tech on the market. If you'd like to check out the new LG OLED TV line for yourself, I've got links down in the description for you to learn more. Thank you so much to LG for making movie night at my house even better, and of course, for supporting what I do. Guys, I gotta shoot an outro. You get down on their level, and they just think, it's, it's loving time. You know, for such a pretty piece of furniture, I'm really loving the way that this came out. It is such a dead simple build. So if you're needing either a TV stand or a dresser or just some additional storage and are limited on space, I really love the combo-ness of this. Um, I do have a set of plans if you're interested in building your own. And of course, I have linked for you everything that I used in the video down in the description. So that's it for this one. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you on whatever I'm building next.